What is up everybody, Logie Bear here. As you can see, I am not out late mule deer hunting. It is 2021, happy 2021 everybody. So what I'm here to tell you guys is the series that is about to start now um, was our late season mule deer hunt. And if you guys follow us on Instagram, then you know that we had a catastrophe, a casualty while we were out there. Day three or day four, um, while we were out there, my hard drive actually failed. One of these guys right here, wasn't a Lacey, it was a Western Digital G drive, but it failed on me while we were out there. Had the entire best season yet, 3.0, had everything literally from 2020 that I had consumed up to that point onto my hard drive and it failed. Luckily, however, uh, I always keep a backup, but the one day that wasn't backed up was the opening day for the deer hunt. So I apologize to you guys, these things happen. Luckily, like I had Braley's moose footage on there, I had everything on there. And luckily I had, of course, a backup and now I have two backups <laughs> just in case something like this happens. But we unfortunately did lose day number one. So what you guys are about to watch is actually day number two. Not a whole lot happened on day one. So this is the setup. It is me, Casey, Brian, Eric, and our friend Matt Lee. If you guys remember Matt, he joined us on Casey's son Gage's hunt in Utah, and he also filmed and edited Casey's Wyoming whitetail hunt. So same Matt. So how it worked when we got out there was we had one public land tag and two private land tags. So private land tag, meaning you can only hunt on private land, public land tag, meaning you can hunt on public land and private land, of course, if you have permission. So we divvied them up shuffled the deck and uh, Casey and Brian drew the two private land tags and Eric drew the public land tags. Three total tags, this is day two. I bounced around with Casey and Brian and filmed them and then Matt actually went with Eric to the public land section of where we were hunting and filmed him. So what Matt did was took his clips and edited them together of Eric and then I edited our footage with the clips that Matt gave me from Eric. So that is where we are at, that is what is going on. I apologize. Um, doing everything that we can to make sure these things don't happen in the future, but we did lose one day of this hunt. So with that being said, here's day two of our late season mule deer hunt. Thank you guys. There shouldn't even be an argument, like you got the cash. Oh, hi. Good morning. <laughs> What's your plan today, big hoss? Day two. Oh man, we had a plan and it changed to a different plan. So we're gonna go to, I don't know what road it's called, but we're gonna go to a high road. The road is closed, there's a gate right there and we're just gonna use the gate and the road as a hiking path and glass some big steep sagebrush faces and I'll also be able to uh, glass back to where these guys can hunt too. So that's my plan. Angry boy. Light's so bright, dude. Logan thinks I woke up angry. I just woke up with some intention today. You woke up yelling. I never <laughs> yelled at no one. Oh, me, and, good you, morning, everybody. me and Eric had some good conversations about some things we didn't like in life. I'm t currently texting this guy. This is what really got me going this morning. Like four and a half years ago. This was probably five years ago. Caught this really beautiful steelhead. Um, we let the steelhead go. And there's this guy in uh, close to me, about an hour away, that does fish carving. So you measure the fish, the length, the width, and then you send him a bunch of pictures, and he'll recreate that fish for you. Anyway, I sent him like twenty five hundred dollars four and a half, five years ago, and I've been thinking about this. Like I email him every year for the last three years. I'm like. Hey man, what's up? And I knew it was gonna be like, he said it was gonna be probably like a year and a half, two years. So I sent him 2,500 bucks. Anyways, the last three years I've been emailing him like, hey dude, like another year, what's up? Every time I email him, he's like, oh yeah, your fish is going in the paint booth next week. Oh yeah, we'll be done real, right away. So it's been about a year now. And then I woke up on my Instagram. I didn't even know I followed the guy and he was posting about uh, something on there. And so then I got upset and I was like, oh yeah, that guy owes me money. Why is it a common theme? amongst taxidermists yeah. that people many times we all seem to have a story my brother walker did the same thing took a 10 pound walleye uh to a taxidermist in roosevelt utah wish i knew his name because honestly i'd say who it was uh 10 pound walleye he wanted to catch and release but unfortunately it had swallowed the jig so far that he had to keep it so he's like well that's awesome i'll mount it same thing as casey just like every time he contacted him which was nearly impossible so when he would get a hold of him it's that yeah you're, you're like yep yeah, coming up right next so anyways that was like 10 years ago and it's just nothing's ever happened i don't know if he put a down payment down or not but if you have a story like 
all of us have a story, whether it's a friend or family or Casey, let us know in the comment section. Have you had a taxidermist rip off your stuff or rip off money? Yeah. It seems so common, dude. It's like pretty sad. Fortunately for me, like he's just sitting on my money. If I lose the money, no big deal. But like you kill an elk and you take the head there and you know, the cape and the antlers, like, and you lose that walker, you know, he caught that fish. He's not going to have that fish. You, you lose not only the money, but you lose those items, which you'll never get back, which sucks. Anyway, good things coming though, guys. We're yeah. gonna have a great day out in well, the field. Welcome to day two. Welcome to day two. <laughs> Roll the intro. Pretty uh, slow morning. I think Matt saw one, one buck and two does on public land, so we're getting our butts kicked. And it's a little discouraging when you roll up to like a trailhead and there's ten trucks, <laughs> and we're not hunting that much, much ground right here. So we're gonna kind of regroup, see what Casey and B Max saw. We did glass a decent buck that will eventually probably be on the private that they can hunt. We might show them that video, see if they want to go after him, but guys, rough hunt, rough conditions, 50 degrees at first light, no rut, so we're moving on. Rutting their faces off. I like to closer the phone scope. Couple nice, like little four points, like three, probably four year old deer. Super pretty. I think we can find better though. I don't know. It's like I, when I look at this buck, I'm like, man, when I was like 15, or even like 25, 25, I'd see that deer and be like, shooter, no brainer. He's a nice deer. I just, I don't think he's like mature, but super pretty. We were very fortunate to be able to do what we do and be able to spend the amount of time we get to spend out in the woods. I hope it doesn't ever make us spoiled. Just a super nice deer. He needs to spread his genes. Oh, now they're running. They heard him. They heard me talking about being spoiled, and they're like, uh-oh, that means he's getting six. Onward and upward, fellers. We're gonna go see this whole entire property today. See everything it has to offer. Got some good uh, deer activity happening today. So far we've seen some new bucks, which is kind of what you hope for on these late hunts. Uh, a lot of ruddy behavior. I s spotted one guy, appears to be favoring his right front leg. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. I don't know if he got injured in a fight, or maybe possibly a gunshot, I'm not quite sure. Let's see what we can, see if we can do some investigating. Could have got injured doing yoga, who knows? Bulgarian leg squat? <laughs> I 
guys, I just found a deer I'm gonna go kill. Definitely not the biggest deer, I don't think, that we've seen. But uh, Brian saw him coming down the hill and he's like, dude, that deer has a broken leg or something. It looked like, I don't know what happened, but right here it has a giant wound and he can't walk on it. It's like, what do you do? Like, we're out here to try to find a big mature deer to kill, but at the same time, that deer is not gonna make it through the winter. That deer will be dead within weeks not days so why not me put my tag on that's one less deer that will be killed out here by a hunter you know besides what I'm trying to say is that deer is gonna die for sure why not kill him put your tag on him and, and utilize the meat so um, I'm excited I don't care like I think that's the right call anyway what would you guys do you see a deer it's not the, or you see an animal it's not the one you know animal you're after caliber you're after but the deer's not gonna make it might as well put your tag. What, what would you guys do? Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever been uh, out hunting and saw a deer or an animal that uh, was injured and you decided to put your tag on it? I'm not saying you have to do this. I don't think there's a right or wrong thing here, but I just watched him. I thought, deer doesn't look to be in the best in the best of uh, spirits. <laughs> I like where your head's at, buddy. Yeah. He's still standing there. He's hurting bad. Yeah, it's so we're about 800 yards now. We're gonna try to get, it's a little windy. I wanna get within like 300 if we can. <laughs> With the old weather be 300. <laughs> Let's go see what we can do. Yeah, bring your backpacks. I'm gonna try to shoot off the backpacks. Playing the boundary game. There we are on public ground, parked off to the side of this road. We've got this section to hunt if we want, right down in this valley. So I think we'll post up right here, try to get a look and see if we can see any of these deer that have maybe been pushed off the top or maybe even pressured off the private and onto public. But luckily for us, nobody is right here. I didn't. I thought there would be some trucks parked right here. So uh, maybe we'll glass for a minute and uh, if anything, move up a little higher and actually get a better vantage point of over that ridge. A little guys? Yeah. One looks like an older deer, but... Just Three. following the does or trying to rut or yeah. There's kind of that hidden cove right there, so it could be tucked up in. So those deer right on the public. Yeah. Hey dude, this is the Eric cam now. Look at this thing. Dang dude. Good rolling. You guys are rolling on this GoPro. I haven't seen footage. It's got a reverse like vlog cam screen, but I haven't seen the footage. Getting out of the wind, honestly, as you can see, taking it pretty easy. Just covering country and glassing. We haven't got too aggressive yet, but don't count us out. It's basically the first full day at the tag. We've had a tag in open season, so we're just trying to learn before we get too aggressive. We've got some does and a small buck, but nothing worth going after. Yeah, it's like right on that ridge. It's about like right there. Well, <clears throat> my heartwarming story took a turn, took a real hard turn. We got over here and we started watching him and he started moving. When we watched him back there, he was stood in the same place for like 20 minutes. And in my head, I was like, man, that deer's just gonna lay down and die. We got over here and he was walking and feeding and we started looking at that wound more. It's just this big black, like to me it looks like he either got shot or something happened right here. But it looked to me like whatever it happened, it happened a while ago and it's just scabbed over and uh, he's getting around fine but he's off the property now. Which before I was feeling bad for him, which I mean it's nature. I, I'm not trying to play God here or anything, but you know, we we don't know about, you know, if I would have never saw that deer, I would have never thought about that deer. Before I was kind of feeling bad for him almost, but it's nature, like, these animals go through some pretty cruel things. You know, there's predators obviously, mountain lions, bears, coyotes, that chase them all over heck and try to eat their babies and eat them. And then you got, you know, on bad winters, you got deer that starve to death, which that's probably gotta be the worst way to die. 
I mean, I was just thinking about, I had a dog that only had three legs and he lived a great life. Anyway, long story short, like, if he would have stayed there on the property, I would have shot him. But after watching him, I think that deer could live, live through winter. He'll never, I don't think that bone will ever heal. Look like that bone might be broken, but he was putting a little weight on it, so. I don't really have a choice now. He's not on property we can hunt. Anyway, so I want to hear about your story, so if you guys have ever seen an animal that you felt like needed to be put down and put your tag on, let us know in the comments down below. Back to you, Eric. Back, back to you, Bob. Eric's Bob, by the way. Question mark. Well, we're gonna make the journey into town. As you can see, it's still light, which is pretty sad when you know you're leaving at prime time. It's uh, pretty discouraging. And again, I'm not. it's not like we've put in effort. I'm not saying we deserve better, but it's been pretty chill and not chill, but it's just been pretty, like the hunt's been chill. And that's what I decided to do the first couple days is just kind of relax. We're gonna get after it tomorrow. But all we saw was a whole grip load of does and a few small bucks. So it's the 19th of November. I would have never think like that you wouldn't just see new bucks showing up and more rut activity. We're seeing groups of four, five, six, sometimes seven to 10 does with zero bucks. So I don't know what the deal is. I'm sure a lot of people experience this this year, both in the elk and the deer rut, that it seems kind of pushed back and pretty slow. So clearly no weather, no snow and no rut activity. But there's always a chance and anything can happen any day. So we're gonna try to stay positive and tomorrow morning, we're gonna go on a, a jaunt. We're gonna put in a little more effort than today. So hopefully the wind stays down and we can get into some canyons that have a lot more cover. Cause I feel like the big bucks just aren't down low yet. So that's our plan. Just texted the guys, we're gonna make like a 30 minute drive into town to see if they need any groceries or snacks. That's our update. So back to you, Casey. It's called the two-step lug. Do the two-step. Well, found one of the good bucks we saw. Matt and I saw the very first 10 minutes we got here. He's currently on the neighboring piece of property, which we do not have access to. So we're just watching him through the phone scope, trying to turn up a deer in our place. This, uh, this type of hunting, again, is pretty unusual for for us if you guys have followed us for any amount of time over the years most all of it is on public land it's like no tag or tag with some limitations and challenges as far as like where you can go to find deer we're going to choose the tag no doubt however it's kind of frustrating because we're just isolated to this i don't know i'd say maybe 750 acres to look over there are deer on it there have been deer we just haven't really seen many mature deer the hobbled up one this morning was probably the most mature deer we've seen um i'd have to say so far so we're just waiting we're hoping we're crossing our fingers it's the time of year is right where things are just moving and traveling and we saw a couple new ones this morning maybe this evening or tomorrow morning we'll see more new ones i don't know the weather is supposed to change we hope it's going to change cold snow wind laying down would be nice but we're doing the best we can putting in lots of hours behind the glass and looking at bucks on the neighbor's property talking it felt different tonight it felt like things are moving um there's a storm coming in obviously but we saw a lot of new deer we haven't seen yeah new we bucks showed up new bucks all the bucks we've seen are definitely rotten they're chasing does they're lip curling they're sniffing they're on the move Just what i also like time what i like to see too is and i saw this night we saw a lot of does that were unintended by bucks yeah there's a lot of does in here all that needs to happen is one or two of them need to go into heat and dude big bucks will start pouring in yeah we've got three days still 
kind of undecided on what the weather's supposed to do tomorrow, but uh, it was originally supposed to snow for the next two days. And every time we've ever hunted over here, when the weather changes and it snows or it gets cold, it gets really good hunting for a few days. So we were kind of banking on that, but we don't know for sure if it's going to do it or not. So have to wake up and see. I know one thing though, I'm looking forward to uh, Logan's Backcountry ba Bakery where uh, we don't do much baking. But we're going to whip up some halibut fish and chips. And by we, I mean Logan, the man behind the camera that if your <laughs> fixture is a little shaky, it's because he's freezing cold. Uh, we're going to go have tartar sauce, some fish, some chips. Some F and C, dude. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. So tomorrow, you know, it's a new day. Um, so tomorrow's a new day. You never know what could happen. Uh, well, I, we Logan's say, guys, freezing cold, and like we're we just trying say. to continue talking and talking just because he's like, look, anytime guys wrap like up. Like we always say, guys, the third day is better than the first day. So <laughs> tomorrow's the third day. We'll see what it's going to be a Friday. Friday. Okay, see you what, do you, what do you think about <laughs> Here the we go, guys. pressure dropping? <laughs> we're going to camp. Let's go. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to give these boys a treat tonight. We're doing uh, fish and chips. We're going to be cooking up some Alaskan halibut that me and Brian caught in uh, Homer, Alaska. But what I'm doing here is uh, cut cut the chips up, de-starched them, did a boil with salt water to make them fluffy on the inside. And then I like to hit them with, a, with two different frying processes. The first one just gets a nice little crust on the outside. You let them sit for a little bit and you turn up the temperature on the oil and hit them with the hot oil. So that way they're not sitting in the oil forever getting super oily. So that's what we're doing right now. It's gonna be really freaking good, I promise. And while those roll, we're gonna mix up some uh, batter. This is a beer batter. I chose Budweiser. It's America's beer. <laughs> so we're gonna slowly add this beer to this. This is just flour, cornstarch, and a little bit of salt. And add about a cup and a half of beer. Keeping everything cold is the secret. Beer's cold, flour's cold, fish is in the fridge, and it's cold too. So you gotta really get it even. You're going for about a pancake mixture, I would say. Once I get this all evened out, you drag your whisk across and it leaves ripples. That's what you're going for. It's still super thick. So we're getting close. I like a light. They'll be crispy and thick, but I don't like chewy, heavy breading. I like it to be like a light, crispy, airy fish. See those ripples on my whisk? I drag it through, that's what you want. So I'll get a plate. Throw some just straight up flour on it for dredging. Dredge the fish, drop it in the beer batter, and drop it in the oil. Um, the other thing is pat dry your fish so it's pretty dry. And then add a little bit of salt to both sides to really suck that moisture out. It'll make for a more flaky fish is what you want. You don't want gooey fish. You don't want chewy, gooey. It's gross with fish. Fish and chicken are kind of the same in my book. See that color? It's starting to float. Floaters are done. Dang, it's really good. Salt while they're hot. No, that salt will kind of stick to them. Let it drip. And always tilt it away from me so the oil doesn't come back. That's how you know it's a fluffy batter. And right when you drop it, you get donuts. It's gonna be light and fluffy. This piece is coming out. Light, big Mac. Good, dude. Let me get those. Eric! I'm played up, bro. Wow. Man, you really gotta be patient to cook this, man. Logan's been over here for like three hours. <laughs> I've been checking in on him like every 10 minutes. Eric supports it. I support this, bro. All right, all right. Let's go without tartar sauce. Hot. Mm -hmm. But show that inside. Do the batter. What's your thought, honestly? Like, I didn't even salt it. It's I forgot crispy. To salt it. Like you said, it's not heavy batter. It's like just crispy. And then that meat is just pure white meat. Dude, heck yeah, bro. Killer. I'm about it. Look at this big one I'm about to do. I don't like the little ones. I like big steaks. Fridge. We're adding some uh, natural lemon flavor and herb tartar sauce to the mix. Yeah, we're gonna wrap up the video, guys. We're gonna grub, everyone's gonna get some rest. Casey's gonna watch some football. 
pretty mellow day. But like I said earlier in the car, like I don't feel like I put in a whole lot of effort anyway, so I got what I deserved. But we got some food and water for our backpacks. Matt and I are gonna go into some country tomorrow morning um, and just try to like get up higher in elevation and glass some timber. These guys probably do the same and check some of this low stuff right here. So it's that time of the year where bucks can just kind of come and go and a new buck can show up any day. And so far we've been seeing new bucks, just no shooters. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think it's just gonna get better and better from here out. We still have three tags to fill and three days to do it. So we better get, better get working a little harder than struggling with the tartar sauce. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe. Same place, same time tomorrow. See you. Oh, yeah.